Welcome to Adults Only Comedy Berlin. Today we have Freddie Grail. <laughs> Hello, Anna Beros. <laughs> or Freddie Grale, yeah, for the Germans out there. And when I invited you for today, you uh, sent me through a suggestion about something that we can talk about, uh, which was a podcast episode called Winter's Bone. Do you want to do you want to tell me why you sent that to me? I mean, I sent it to you because uh, somebody sent it to me. <laughs> From New York, it's a little, uh, it was a little excerpt from This American Life, which is a big podcast in the US. And it was about dating during quarantine in New York. And basically this phenomenon that people were suddenly like super into commitment because they all wanted to find a winter, which is, you know, wintering up, uh, like having a partner to snuggle up and, uh, and uh, kind of get through the cold the cold part of the quarantine because this lockdown is different than the first one and we all know it and we can feel it <laughs> yeah right i i agree it's different however i feel like my experience with this one i know i'm in a different place but have you have you felt this um this desire for commitment from men in this lockdown i have not because i <laughs> i started I did a lot of dating like in the summer months mm -hmm. and then when the second lockdown was announced I got like really panicky and then I went on a couple of dates but then I was just kind of over it and I was like you know what I I can't even deal with this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Is there do you think there's a general kind of Berlin apathy around dating it's like ugh I've tried this already. It's not going to work this yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that I don't think it's possible to meet somebody really great, obviously. Mm. But yeah, I mean, I think every, everybody who's been on there more than 24 hours is like, this is grim. Being on... On what? like a dating app. Right. Okay. So <laughs> I... <laughs> I am um, at the start of this lockdown, I started up a friendship with someone um, that really excited a special me. special friendship? Well, no, yeah. it, it, it developed like it was just a fr I was really uh, excited by the time that I spent with this person, really um, energized, like, I, you know, would spend four hours talking wow, and nice. like heaps of really interesting mutual interests, uh, interesting kind of sh histories and and. Um, and so sort of very supportive and listening and empathetic. And it was like, wow, like I feel, I felt so charged by it. And we met quite a, we met a couple more times and then, um, and there was lots of chat on, on messenger and I was like, okay, f cool. I finally found someone that I'm genuinely interested in. And, um, and so yeah, during the lockdown, I, I'd still, I deleted all my dating apps, uh, yeah, like in the middle of the year, nothing. I, I just realized it wasn't working. Um, and then eventually uh, this friend and I um, had sex and uh, and then he did all the right things afterwards uh, to make me feel like it was moving in a romantic direction. He didn't, and mm -hmm. like nothing. And then a week later he, um, he told me he just wanted to be friends. <laughs> Love it. It's uh, my favorite pattern of, of Berlin dating. It was like, you know what? Um, I'm not looking for anything serious. Then like he cooks you dinner three times in a row and like you just spend hours on the couch watching TV, like doing all the coupley things. And he's like, no, but you remember that I don't want you to get attached, but let's do all the things that will 100% <laughs> make you feel super attached to me. I'm like, this is not cool. Like, like then then explain yourself better, but don't yeah. give me, give me this shitty, like, let's keep our distance. It's like, I don't, it's like crazy love. It, it it's yeah. No, I don't. I'm not saying that this guy did anything wrong. Definitely, it was just one week. Like it was one week from when um, the sex happened, and then like you know messaging and 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 he was doing some kind of cleanse. So I didn't expect to see him. And then like as soon as he finished doing the cleanse, he wanted to meet the next day. So I was like, okay, like we're being talking. This is okay. This is moving in that way. And. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it really shocked me. Like, it was just like, wow, you're not even, you're not, like, <laughs> why would, what, what? And, yeah, and he apologized. He apologized and he's done all the right stuff, but it really, um, like, uh, winded me. It really took the, mm. it, just, it just shocked me so much. And I, I don't want to put it, like, I've not had this experience for a long time. Like, I think the last time I experienced this was in reverse with my first proper boyfriend in Berlin. And I ended it again and again because it was just like ah you represent this is the first time that you were rejected in berlin get the <laughs> fuck out of here <laughs> i don't want to talk to you again 
<laughs> no, I've been rejected. I've been rejected. But, Good. Um, I'm just trying to think though. Like I've been rejected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like uh, I've been ghosted by someone that I had feelings for, and then like became friends with them again, and then um, and then like yeah, like uh, just you know nice little rejections that were kind of you know subtle. Like oh yeah, like rescheduling and rescheduling of yeah, hangs, yeah, yeah. and then it's like okay, we're not gonna. That's not gonna yeah. happen. Um, but yeah, like this is probably the first one in a long time that I've been like, yeah, just like, not even gonna, not, like we're hanging out. It's fun. You're not even gonna. Yeah. Wow. The, well, the thing is like, I, uh, I went on a lot of dates in like May, June. Yeah, me too. That's so, exactly when yeah, I did. Yeah. So like six or seven dates in a quite short period of time, mm-hmm. like a couple of weeks. And that was so, through an app? Yeah, that was through an app. I think it was through Hinge, which I ah. had. Do you recommend Hinge? I, I liked it. I mean, it was like, okay, I'm going to say, so I went on dates and they were all really nice, but I was ultimately not really interested either because the person was a little too, like, too, I only want open stuff, poly. Mm-hmm. And that was like, that's just, that wasn't my vibe back then mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, and isn't still really, I'm not saying it would, could never be, but so it was either that or that it, he was, they were like nice guys, but I wasn't really interested in seeing them again. So mm-hmm. I think that Hinge has like, a little more proper guys maybe yeah but maybe also a little bit boring but like it kind of mm. depends on if you're if you're looking for the adventure then maybe not but i think they're way less crazy over there so okay i, I do recommend it well i did i did re-download bumble um after this friend and sent me like a really nice message and you know such like good wishes like i think he will be a good friend it's just like ah and he sent me this really lovely message and so i was like okay i need to get into bumble because i need to distract myself and yeah. i spent 20 minutes like uh, setting up the profile and then like swiping and in the, that 20 minutes i saw two of my exes from last year <laughs> and i was like oh my god and then the next day i looked and then this friend was on there and oh. I was like, oh my God, like, I just can't. Escape. That's the thing. Like, I feel like with, with Bumble, even Berlin feels so small because I also know so many female comedians who are on it. I'm like, this is so awkward. Like, I'm sure our interests are like sort of similar. Like, I can't, I can't deal with the, the thought that people are going on like several days with like me and a another friend. female comedian. <laughs> and is Bumble the female comedian? Kind platform? of. I feel, I mean, there are a lot of jokes about Bumble. True. I was on, I, I rejected Bumble mid year when I did also all my dating in summer and I was on Tinder instead. Cause I was like, this is easier. I'm sick mm-hmm. of being, I'm sick of like making a, you know, making the first move and then being rejected and blah, like let's make it equal. Like I don't understand why I have to, like I liked the concept of Bumble at first and then it just, it just pissed me off. So then I was using Tinder in the middle of the year and yeah, I really met a lot of crazies, but also some cool people, but just mm. as always with dating apps, never chemistry, mm. never, it's just never, never chemistry. Or if there is chemistry, I know it's because, oh, this guy's a narcissist and I'm just so drawn to like his facade of strength. Yeah. Um, and, and then I, like, I didn't didn't pursue it anymore but um but yeah and so yeah i decided no no more crazies i'll try bumble but i yeah i deleted it after i saw this friend on and i was just like i cannot if it's like i already made my decision no more dating apps because the time to success rate of even meeting someone that stays in my life like the the equation is just so unbalanced um but then if the universe is like throwing two x's and this guy that i had developed feelings for <laughs> yeah it's too much it's too- <laughs> I, I i did this crazy experiment on bumble i think the first time so i don't know it was like a year or two ago i can't remember and i was like okay i'm going to be super strategic i'm going to be like so precise i'm going to write down everything exactly in my profile that i want i know exactly yeah. what i'm looking for yeah. like I was like nationality because I dated a lot of Americans. You so went I, nationality? Yeah. I think I think I said something like, like Americans. I can't remember like how, if I put it in my profile or in the search engine anyway. And I was like so specific about like age, about interests. And then I go on Bumble and like in the first 30 seconds, I see somebody who checked all the boxes and I knew him. And I didn't like him. And I was like, okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that is obviously not the right way. Oh, that's it. hilarious. I, I yeah, with Tinder, I also got really specific. <laughs> I was like, hey, I do st- like I do shows every night. I don't have a lot of time. I'm allergic to cats. Uh, talk less if you just want casual sex. 
if you want, like I am looking for a relationship, but, um, you know, like let's just have a two hour date and see how it goes. Two and hours is already, it's already a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Have you ever had that, that you didn't have an, like that you liked somebody in the long run that you didn't have an instant connection with? Um, Hmm. So with this ex-boyfriend who I actually said no to, like we sort of, um, like my first real relationship in Berlin, I, there was a connection, but he represented all of these things that scared me. So I was like, Oh, musician who's touring, he's going to be, um, unreliable. He's like, he's going to have lots of these like pulled interests and it doesn't, I don't, but on the plus side, like musicians who tour are super faithful. So it's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Right. Uh, French musician. <laughs> like, oh, <geez. laughs> and so because, um, and he was a guitarist and I just like left my ex-husband who was a guitarist, who was a musician. Uh, so yeah. I really put up the stops and I was like, no. And also other people had talked shit about him and said that he was like, uh, really sort of self involved and really, um, like just not cool. He wasn't one of the cool kids in this community that I was in. And, um, and so I wasn't, like I wasn't really attracted to him. He was trying. He was really trying, and I was like, mm 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 mm. Like, but let's be friends. Let's hang. And then like we'd hang, we'd hang, and then I'd be like, yeah, no, no, we're just friends. We're just friends. And then like we got together and we started having sex. And then I was like, I can't do this. We've just got to be friends. And so I did that, and I I broke up with him like five times in the first year, or ended things, or then broke up with him, then moved it to an open relationship. And then uh, he fucked that up because the rule was don't tell me. And then he wanted to tell me Jeez. about what he did. And I was like, okay, it's over. And then like I started, I dated one of his, like someone that worked in the same community as us. And then, and he got really messed up. And then, and then I ended up in hospital and then I had this what? big aha. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because like, of them? No. Oh, it was, okay. Well, I was living a pretty unhealthy lifestyle. It's the abscess in my throat story. I'm not sure if you've heard it, no, but yeah, I as a, I've okay. got a joke about sucking dick and um, yeah. <laughs> and anyway, I ended up in hospital, had this big, like, oh my God, life, life um, realization moment and realized I actually like he was a really important person for me. And so I asked him like, look, it's been a crazy year and a half, but I, I would really like to try a monogamous relationship with you. And this time I'm really here. Mm. And we did, and it worked really well for the first six months. And in the last six months, uh, yeah, he was unreliable and, um, his communication went really off and, uh, he kind of, um, all the, all the fears that I had at the very, very start sort of came true. Is it the same guy? I feel like because the first time we, not probably the first time we met, but the first time I remember us having like a longer conversation was at Same Heads. Mm -hmm. And you were with a boyfriend who was French. Yeah, it probably was him. (laughs) And it was... Oh, yeah. It was... I don't know what stage of the relationship in, but it was so bizarre because literally every five se- seconds he would talk about how much he would like to suck dick. Yeah, and it was Paul Salamone's like, dick, right? He was talking. To oh Paul. yeah, or or any any dick. And I'm I'm sure he was drunk, but it was like, and it started, and it was kind of funny at first, and we like laughed about it, but it was like he mentioned it so much that I was just like, I'm just like. Anna, you should really let him suck a dick because I think this is not going away. <laughs> and then the next time um, we saw each other, I think you were broken up or something. I don't know. But it it wasn't like the next week, but you did break up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, um, like his humor was very much like pushing things like that. Yeah. That, that was the other thing. I couldn't tell if that was just a sense of humor, but it, yeah. it was like... There was a lot of subtext. I don't know. There was so much going on in that relationship. <laughs> that was sort of towards the... <laughs> when was that? Uh, if that was Same Heads, if I actually played at Gamu's, then that was yeah towards the very end. Yeah. And I remember that night, he he let, he let was like... I was like, hey, I just want to have this conversation. And he went outside and um, he's like, I'm going outside. I'm like, okay, I'm just finishing this conversation. I was a bit drunk. And then um, I go outside and he's like, he's walked off. And I was like... D- dude like what's happening and then he's like fucking bitch and like he was just he was uh, he was i think he was having a moment where he wasn't feeling very secure about our dynamic and Mm. um but yeah he he walked off and called me a bitch and then we had this whole conversation in the taxi oh it was yeah it was messy yeah yeah that was like a messy evening it's so funny because if that's like my first impression of you it's like wow this is a wild girl (laughs) And I mean, you you were, especially, I mean, now 
you, your lifestyle has changed somewhat without alcohol and drugs. Like yeah. different things happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. It, that was a um, very, like we smoked a lot of weed and we drank a lot and I was really drunk that night. Like I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was too. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. I don't think I've ever, I've never met one of your partners. Well, the thing or is like, officially. <laughs> the thing is like, I mostly um, dated long distance. Mm. Also in the last years, I haven't really dated a lot and it wasn't very long. So I don't think you could have met anyone. Mm. 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 Yeah. Long distance. Oh, what the, the fuck? I know. That's horrible. I have like a, I have like a, it's a genetic D, like default or fault i don't know <laughs> therapy trying to figure that out <laughs> um <laughs> where uh, i'm just really attracted to people who aren't like super there <laughs> in my life so you go figure <laughs> oh wow okay i yeah that's like an instant no for me i'm not gonna that doesn't work i need someone that's around i need to be able to like i don't have a lot of time but i need to be able to see someone you know twice a week totally yeah yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's no good reason it's just like it just kind of happened i don't know how these things happen to me all the time but yeah it's not interesting these patterns of behavior and people where we attract even now like the, the the guys that i talk to the most who are like either exes or kind of people I had a thing with they're also not in berlin but i met them here but then they you leave. know they were just like traveling through or you know stuff like that wow i think all my exes are here or they're dead like it's literally crazy to me i mean i've dated like maybe two people here in like 12 years <laughs> wow that's crazy and like very shortly yeah i mean in general i haven't dated a lot but it's still kind of funny yeah yeah, I felt like I hadn't dated that much, but then, you know, re-downloading Bumble and seeing, like, two of the guys that I dated last year. Oh, I remember one of the last times we saw each other was also at the wall at this mm -hmm. gig, and you were also like, you were like, oh, this guy is here. I can't remember the exact backstory, but it was so funny because it was somebody that you had either dated or hooked up with before or wanted to, and he was in the audience, and it just... It's like such a topic. I don't know if it's the same for guys. I'm sure it is because on the one hand, it makes you kind of like insecure if there's somebody that you, you know, maybe you want to impress them a little bit or mm -hmm. you're like a little scared of what they think of you or you don't actually want to see them at all. And suddenly they're in the audience and you're supposed to be like all loose and confident and <laughs> talking. And, and, you know, we both talk quite openly about our sex life as well, yeah. at, at least at times. And, and so it's like, I don't know. I can't remember... What was the exact story again? Uh, this guy, I'm pretty sure, an Australian guy? Yeah. Yeah. It was a very long, complicated history where um, we'd met in, our, in my first year of university and became friends, and then we didn't see each other, and then we became friends through one of my like boyfriends later on, and then uh, I ended up making out with him in, like, in my house that I lived with with that boyfriend. And Ooh, yeah, cheaty, cheat. cheaty, cheat, cheat. <laughs> and then I broke up with that boyfriend. And then that guy who was at the show, he moved to Berlin. Right. <laughs> and then I visited Berlin and I was like, I love this place, but I can never move here because he's moved here. And oh, yeah. And he like totally um, uh, sided with my boyfriend when I broke up with him. Like he he acted like uh, yeah. what happened between us was just my fault. And um and he, he went to my boyfriend at the time and was like, you know, you're my friend and like, you're my priority. I'll always be there for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember your time with that, which is so interesting. And it's kind of like honorable on one side and, and the other side is like, what the fuck? It's like, dude, we were friends first. Like we've known each other since 2005. You asshole. Like yeah. you're siding with this, my boyfriend who you hardly know. He's just a friend of your friend. Um, and then, uh, and then anyway, um, when I moved to Berlin, I saw that he'd moved to London and I was like, oh, that's good. That's good. Like we hadn't really seen each other in years because that incident really burnt me. And then um, and then he moved back here and he like made a comment on one of my Instagram posts. And I was like, which was about a show. And I was like, what are you? Are you are you, are you, come, are you in Berlin now? And yeah, anyway, he was like, I'd love to meet up. And I was like, oh. and then uh, and then, yeah, he came to the show and he was there. Yeah. And you tried for. Yeah, oh, we, yeah, we we caught up a lot. Actually, we, and we caught up again. He's uh, he's in an open relationship, Yay. and um, 
and he apologized for what happened in the past. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that was really cool. Um, and we, yeah, talked a lot. And then, um, and then actually it ended with this really misleading stuff. Um, he, uh, <laughs> he apologized and then, um, he was like, look, Anna, I'm, I'm always here for you. Like I will, like I'm, I'm with my girlfriend, but I will always make time for you. Like massive eye contact. Okay. And it's like, dude, what are you like? Are you saying you want to fuck me? Like, is that what's yeah. happening here? Am I get, like, what? Like, uh, mm. because like most of the time, like I've lived here a couple of years. Like I don't need more friends. Like I'm covered on those bases. Like I don't like, it's nice that you offer, but I'm not that lost. Yeah. Like he's the one that was coming back here after being in London yeah. for, for two years. He was the one that was feeling quite isolated, feeling he was feeling quite dependent on his girlfriend for mm. his uh, social circle. Mm. And yeah. And, but it, it didn't feel like a, if you need a friend, it felt like a, I will make space for you, Anna, in my, in my open, open relationship. relationship. Oh, that's so lovely. Oh, that's so what lovely. What a big sacrifice. I know, right? <laughs> oh yeah. I want to get all confused in your <laughs> open relationship with your tantric massage girlfriend, who, masseuse girlfriend, who is really cool. They invited me to a nudist beach like the next week and um, I just happened to have already gone there the day before. Um, and look, and, and, and then just no more contact. Like they oh, invited, Jesus, like yeah. she then invited me to a beach, became friends with her. And then, um, I asked him how a festival was. And then that was the end of no more communication. Um, so that was, that was a bit, it was, it was very, um, like it was one of those moments where after he apologized to me and heard my pain around what had happened 10 years ago, it felt like do you remember that thing where um something so like um therapeutic and like brings you know ties this this sore loose end in your history ties it up and like fixes it do you ever have that feeling when that happens then you feel like okay i'm gonna get hit by a bus now oh interesting i don't think i do but i know exactly what you mean that yeah. it's like too good to be true or that yeah. it's like oh yeah it was like when um my first boyfriend, uh, who first ever boyfriend who, um, we were together for three years. And then when I broke up with him, he ended up trying to commit suicide and then he was comatose for four days, but no mental, like no brain damage, all good. Uh, and his mum blamed me and his whole family blamed me, even though like, what? We were wow. broken up. Um, I ran into him like three years later and he apologized. Wow. And after that, I was like, it was just like this huge, this yeah. huge like bomb on my wound. And uh, yeah. And after that, I was like, I'm going to get hit by a car. <laughs> that is really weird. <laughs> but I feel like me included, and I've heard it from like at least two other friends that during quarantine, they had like a major forgiveness uh, reconciliation sessions with exes. I, I also had that with an ex um, a couple of months ago. Yeah in fall um where he had something bad happen to me i had something bad happen to me. so we just kind of like talked to each other and we had already also broken off co contact completely during quarantine it was like very up and down up mm -hmm. and down and then yeah we we both kind of went through our whole relationship and just like said sorry for all the things and like he doesn't live here mm -hmm. in berlin so there's no way to like actually make up or anything but it was it was crazy. And I think because everybody probably has spent so much time with themselves and like mm. going through their life and like what's gone wrong and like, why am I alone in quarantine? <laughs> um, it, it's really beautiful. It's like one of the most satisfying things I've ever experienced in my life to say, to say him, to hear him say certain things to me that I always just wanted to hear and him just saying it as a friend, even that was amazing. Oh, that's yeah. great. I think, yeah, I think we're actually all, maybe not all of us, but I feel like there's been a lot of self-work and uh, who knows, uh, are, are we all going to undo it in 2021? We're all just going to start <laughs> fucking each other up once we're, oh, God, we're not I stuck in not. home. I, I got so good with meditation. Me too. I meditate. I meditate. Well, I couldn't have stopped drinking and smoking weed without meditating and exercising every day. I guess. Yeah. And it's, yeah. A, yeah. That and makes so sense. That's that. Yeah, I've gotten really good with that. That's just like an absolute resource I need I need to use. Yeah, me too. Um, what was I thinking? Uh, but I actually, with regards to this quarantine, I haven't felt like this alone feeling. Um, 
I like I had this friendship that I thought might be moving in a certain direction, but now it's not, and that's fine. <laughs> but I I don't know. I haven't actually felt that alone. I had like one like in June, July. I had like one kind of slump where mm-hmm. I felt like really bad. I don't really know why because you know it was actually like the, it was all lifted and the weather was nice. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't really remember what brought it about. Um, but yeah, that there I was like super, super just like desperate. I'm never going to find anyone. And then it just kind of went away again. But it's, it was also when I started meditating, actually. Mm. So I'm not, I don't know. I'm not saying it's 100% connected, but it probably is. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but um, in terms of loneliness, uh, I bought a sex toy. Uh, you, you published um, your sex toy. <laughs> yeah, I think I had like a little bit. I, I bought two very different sex toys. Because I feel like I, I learned, like at the beginning of quarantine, I also bought my first ever vibrator, like a womanizer, like a little thing that basically sucks on your clit. That's the air pulsation yeah, technology. Exactly. So mm-hmm. it's nothing that you insert, mm-hmm. really, it just kind of vibrates on the outside. Mm-hmm. And it was like, is that this what was you your have? first ever sex yeah. toy purchase? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, you know, I, I have a very religious background and yeah. I just didn't have sex at all in my 20s. So it was just like, <laughs> blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, so I don't know. I, I always masturbated, but it just always seemed like I don't find them aesthetically super nice. So I was never like, ooh, this looks like something I want to put inside me. It was the aesthetic that put you off. It wasn't the a little bit. It yeah, it wasn't the feeling of like maybe it being um, not dirty, but yeah, perverted. Uh, yeah, that, I guess so. Like, I I don't think I I didn't like judge people who did it, but I was like, ah, oh, just doesn't because I don't know. Like, masturbating was never a problem, so I was just like, mm, like, what would this? What else would this do? Can I ask super personal, but of course, yeah. uh, adults only. <laughs> <Of> course. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't mas- expect anything less from you. <laughs> With masturbation, um, I really only stimulated my clitoris up until, I would say, last year. I never put my hands inside mm-hmm. me. Um, is that Was that the same for you? Or did you, did you delve? <laughs> I did delve, but I would say without really knowing a lot about what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I, I was just like, oh, okay, this feels a little different but I would still need to simulate the clitoris also. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then one of the things I did, so I got the womanizer. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like super, super intense. I I mean, it's very effective. I I was, I was, didn't know if I liked it 100% because mm-hmm. it was almost like a little too much. Yeah, and I, I often found like when I ever, like when I first bought a vibrator, it was like, this is so different from real sex that exactly. I think it's desensitizing me. Exactly. And it's too fast and it's too, it's too aggressive and it, it's so different from real life. And that's kind of exactly what I found. And also I, I really fervently listened to a, a fellow country woman of yours, uh, Juliet Allen. She's a sexologist in Australia oh, cool. and she has a really cool podcast called Authentic Sex. And she's like, I don't know, she's, she's not even like the best person to explain. She's just like, I think had a lot of experience and she's just like very open and she once in an interview said that she doesn't really think that vibrators are super good because they desensitize you right. in the long run and people kind of forget how to use their own hands mm-hmm. and kind of they forget how to explore on their own body. And I was like, hmm. And then she she yeah. sells these crystal pleasure wands, she calls them. So basically kind of dildos made out of like rose quartz and mm-hmm obsidian and they just look really really beautiful and um so i got really intrigued by that and i bought one from a company here in berlin called Mm -hmm. libelai she's on koposa dam Mm -hmm. and and then that kind of kicked off a different journey because with this woman that i bought the my rose quartz dildo from she also offers masturbation zoom seminars Mm -hmm. workshops Mm -hmm. and so that for me was a big game changer in my own practice like it had nothing to do with the crystal pleasure wand yet Mm -hmm. but it was it was like a three-hour session you could stay in your bed at home which was super i never would have gone to like an online like an actual person in person i wouldn't masturbate in front of other women absolutely not (laughs) 
<laughs> like I I totally um, honor these women who can do that and who are that free, but no, thank you. Like I I could, but it would need to feel like a party. Yeah, I mean I don't know. I'm sure she makes the like it's like dimmed light and music or what, like yeah, or incense dubs. or whatever. I don't know, but it was yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of women feel that way. And yeah. so I did this masturbation class. And it was like awesome. It was. It so was hold on, like, you stayed in your bed. You had yeah. The... So we, it was like all on Zoom. Mm-hmm. And the first half, like one and a half hours was just like kind of theory, a little bit of teaching, mm-hmm. a little bit like why she, she said this thing that most people feel more embarrassed to, to be caught in the act of masturbating than caught in the act of sex yes. because it's like more shame attached and everything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and yet, like, especially for women, I think the more we know our own body, the better the sex with a partner is Mm -hmm. also going to be. So it's actually like super essential. Also, a lot of women have a lot of problems coming with a partner Mm -hmm. and, you know, all these things. And then there was, she's like a tantric person. So she's into that. And, um, and tantric is also a lot about breathing Mm -hmm. and, and about sound and movement. And so there was like. The second half was like a practical session. And so there was like a little playlist and she all got us like dancing <laughs> just like to get like the juices flowing and then. And to loosen up, I guess. Yeah, like just once like, you and body. like to feel sexy and like yeah. to feel like that you feel sexy in your body mm-hmm. and like you're alone. So there shouldn't really be any other thoughts of like, oh, does this look silly? So you feel quite, you know, everybody dances alone at home anyway. Yeah. But, um, so it was like sexy music. And then she did a lot of like breathing techniques that I don't know enough, mm. of, but it was, you know, it was kind of like a lot of connecting your kind of root chakra. So like ba- basically your, uh, your pussy with, uh, like your breath and your brain and your heart and just like kind of to create the circle and really feel, feel all those parts of your body cool and then and then it was like kind of hands-on so by this point you're like lying down so you're obviously your camera is going to the wall so like it's not like we looked at each other okay i was wondering like did you turn off your cameras or did you just um did you just (laughs) like because that would have been not a pretty (laughs) sight and obviously she muted everyone so we could only hear her we couldn't hear anyone else so it, it did feel like super safe yeah. and she had like kind of drummy music oh, on <laughs> yeah, she did. and then she kind of guided us to like how and where to touch ourselves. And like one of the major things that I loved about it was that she was always like, stay curious because mm. the thing about masturbating, and I think that is true for everyone. It's like everybody has their technique how to get it done and mm-hmm. get it done fast. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we? Yeah. And it's so funny because that's not actually the goal. Like at all. Like when we're with a partner, it's like, Ooh, like let, let's make it last as long as possible. When you're with yourself, it's like, Ooh, 60 seconds. Chaka. <laughs> and it's so, it's so dumb. Right. And it is. And it's like, I mean, I think for guys, it's always mind blowing how fast women can come by themselves yeah, because yeah. it's so difficult with a partner. And mm-hmm. I think women are also really confused by that. They're like, how is this possible? Yeah. Like, I know how to get myself. Why can't why I, can I, why can't I come? Like, I'd like to be able to do this because I think it's going to like make us feel closer. And yet I can't right now yeah. because of, but this with a partner, it's like, okay, with a long-term partner, it's different. I think, you know, you know each other, but I think in those first, like getting to know you right. sessions with a person, yeah. You're, you're, the thing is you've got to be, um, so I've been reading a bit, uh, cause I'm writing an article about, um, female ejaculation Ooh, and, um, if a Mars comedy club, actually, I'm going to be, <laughs> <laughs> you should listen to authentic sex podcast. She has an amazing interview with someone about Ooh, it. I'm going to listen to it then. Um, and so I've been reading some things, um, about like, you know, what the internet says about how to achieve female ejaculation. And, um, and on all the things like German, English, whatever they, the one thing that is always repeated is you need to be relaxed. You need to be mm. relaxed. And so when you're getting to know someone, oh God. of course you're not fucking relaxed. Not. Like how you, you, you've got these, like, you want to, you want to feel like you've got all of these expectations and hopes tied into the sexual experience. Like the fact that men can just come like that is yeah. pretty amazing. I mean, they also, you know, I think. I heard that also from men that for them, it's, it's sometimes harder on a first date to come because also they, their emotional, Mm. you know, emotional pressure can also. I never have that problem. 
I'm joking. <laughs> and also but... drug, drug, of course. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> I once, no, I once um, was uh, talking to some comedians and I talked about how, um, you know, like, I'll, yeah, a guy will always come, the, like, when we have sex. And they were like, Jesus, Anna, like, what a brag. Like, you always get them to come. And I was like, well, yeah. And I didn't realize how, how um, yeah, arrogant I sounded. And it's like, okay, that's not always true, but, like, yeah. pretty much most of the time. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm going to, like, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. And so, therefore, I do have a sense that women, like, there is an imbalance. Yeah, I, like, I will not always get to come when I have sex with someone. Yeah. At least if we only have sex for a month, then it's unlikely that I'm going to have... Yeah. I, totally. Look, and I'll even say, it's unlikely I'm going to have gotten myself there whilst we've had sex. Like, it's, it's not even their responsibility. Like, I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... That's like one thing I like that she was always like, okay, you have this one thing that you always do. And that's even Mm. true with a partner. You know, once you've like figured it out, it's like, oh my God, I figured it out. Now let's always do this, do it this way. And then she was like, okay, now you're on your clip. But like there, I mean, the female Jenna Taylor, they're like, it's like crazy how sensitive is and how many nerve endings. And there are like so many erogenous zones Mm -hmm. just in that area. Mm -hmm. And so it's like there are like so many things that can be stimulated in areas that I'd never really thought about. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it's all like very close together, but yeah. still like different zones. Yeah, yeah. it's and um, even like the urethra. Mm-hmm. Is that the right urethra? Word? Yeah, and because um, and like she she like made us like <laughs> close all the different holes, like try and like kind of Kegel exercises, yeah. and it was so interesting. I'd never done that in a in a sexual context to like close my I'm doing it now (laughs) (laughs) we're like all like scrunched up yeah yeah. uh... Um, anyway so it was just like so educational to be like ooh, this part i can do something with and then what's super important i i uh, always experienced that when i was uh, trying to orgasm with a partner and i felt like ooh, it's coming and then i was like literally like and I was like okay I can't like not not move and just like put all my concentration and hopefully trying to come Mm -hmm. and like literally think about nothing else and then she was like no but you have to like lose and you have to like you can like breathe if if you breathe from your pussy upwards then that kind of spreads all the sexual energy into your into your body I don't know for me that was all like super helpful and yeah mind-blowing and um I've I've not had a lot of sex since then. <laughs> so and also this is like it's always like in a partnered setting, it's like so different because it's also a lot about like talking maybe a little bit beforehand, like what you yeah. like and stuff. And that doesn't really happen on a first drunken Dra- yeah. it can, I guess. It depends on the people, but yeah. So I don't know. So for me I feel like quarantine I didn't have a lot of sex with people, but I spent a lot of time actually thinking exploring even just like or like with meditation just like exploring my inner world and mm-hmm. or like i like that in my, world. my inner world, <laughs> yeah. my inner world. <laughs> and um, so i don't know i feel like i probably learned more about my sexuality in this year even though i didn't really have a lot of sex then in other years i think that's I uh, that makes total sense like yeah alone you're gonna i alone i don't like that word but yeah like yeah by yourself you're gonna yeah I've, I've learned so much more about my body as well like first year that i've really worked inside my vagina mm-hmm. and, and and uh now i i can orgasm regularly from like requires stimulation on the clitoris as well as inside but i can feel that i'm orgasming inside and it's not right. actually coming from the clitoris it's not right. just a pure clitoral yeah. orgasm and that's that's cool but um but yeah, the like sober dating, like, yeah, I've been having, I've last year, this, this year, I've only had sex once this year, but that's fine. Um, yeah, the, this conversation around sex. Cause yeah, I, I think I mentioned in, in Carl's podcast, uh, he talks about a sex menu. So um, when you get to know someone uh, saying what you like, what you're mm-hmm. open to trying, mm-hmm. um, what works. Mm. And, um, and so, yeah, I'm more, I've become more, a bit more confident in, starting that dialogue around mm, like this or like that yeah. or you know any feedback or <laughs> and it's super uncomfortable yeah. like at first but i think it's like one of the hardest 
things. I think, yeah. I think what Carl said was cool. It's like, it can be like foreplay if you can, Mm -hmm. if you can get into it and if you make it. But the thing is, I've definitely got a history of, um, like I've got a bit of trauma around talking about it because I feel like in the past when I've given feedback or asked or, um, or yeah, um, answered their questions or yeah, given directions, then that's somehow, um, damaged their confidence. Yeah, it's a really fine line, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because they're like, but you have to tell me what you want. And then you're like, oh, could we do this position? They're like, no, I don't like it. I'm like, okay, cool, thanks. (laughs) Well, that was good. Uh, So now what? Um, Yeah, or it's like, you know, when you're like, like less pressure or more pressure or like there or like there. And then it just, it ends up, I feel like they often end up feeling like they're just failing the whole time and mm. they're never going to figure it out. And, and so, then I'm also thinking that I'm failing because I'm like, oh, my fucking body is not like giving me an right? orgasm. And like I used to be right? like, I used to like halfway through sex, I'm like, oh, I forgot. It's not going to happen. And then I would just be like, oh, fuck. And then it was just <laughs> like, and then it was just like the end. And I just like lost all my kind of confidence to like try new things or like mm-hmm, talk to them because mm-hmm. I mean, that's I don't know if that's more because I I took such a big gap of not having sex and then I was maybe more inexperienced and other people were more experienced so maybe I felt less confident I'm not really mm-hmm. sure or if that's the same for everyone at mm-hmm. some point mm-hmm. but I used to get so frustrated especially because on your own it's so easy to come and then it's just like why is this not is working yeah I think yeah I think the um the getting to know you. I also, yeah, I, I don't know. Knowing that you can come and then being with someone else and hopefully having this like playful, a bit of feedback and then slowly giving more and more feedback and getting to know each other physically. I'm, I'm not worried about either of us coming really. Like I don't, mm. I don't expect that at all. I just want the, the feeling of the intimacy and the, the trying to get yeah, to know I mean, each that's, other. That's the big game changer, isn't it? Mm. When you take out the goal oriented thinking is like, okay, yeah. this is what needs to happen instead of like, Ooh, what if we both just have a really fun time? Yeah. Like I want to, I want to get to know you. I want you to get to know me. I want it to feel good. And we're just, and it's, it's like, it's a work in progress. Like we're not gonna, yeah. and then it's always just sort of experimentation. That's, that's how yeah. I want it to be. Um, I bought, um, is it, it's not called the womanizer. It's called the satisfier, mm-hmm. but there's so many variants of that. And it's, um, it's just a classic, you know, big thing to put inside you, but also it's got like a, it looks like a spanner. So it's got right. like a two little, like a half circle, two little prongs and then like a big mm-hmm. guy. Um, and, and it vibrates or it doesn't, it vibrates. Yeah. It's got like 23 different settings. Um, and it vibrates on all three points. Whoa, that's uh, a lot. It's a lot. There's a lot happening on this tool. Like men, men have to compete with robots. It's not exactly. quite Exactly. But I, when I, so I much prefer to, um, explore myself and enjoy myself with my hands. Um, but then sometimes if I'm wanting to have like a, have, you know, a session where I'm, you know, like a long session and see what I can do and Mm -hmm. experiment a bit more. Then I will get out the satisfier and, uh, and really like give it some time. Like I wait for my housemates to be out. So I'm not paranoid about the vibration. I can't even imagine having (laughs) housemates. Right. Um, and, uh, and then I, yeah, because it's a totally different, like with the, with the vibration, I feel like I can have, um, multiple orgasms, sorry, Mm -hmm. multiple orgasms that, um, that like, and again, and again, and it can go for quite a long, like it's quite Mm -hmm. a a long period of pleasure. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, I haven't really done that with my hands where it's just been like ongoing. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I've never thought about that, but yeah, that's probably true. But I do try to limit the, the vibrator uh, play because yeah, it, it totally desensitized. It's just too, it's just another, it's, it's a, mach- it's a robot. Yeah. Mm. And also like people get addicted to that really mm. quickly and, and then they can't come through anything else and then their yeah. partner gets frustrated for, yeah. you know, but it's, I don't know. It's like, it's like an amazing thing that happened. It must've been men that invented that. Right. They were like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're going to show them that we, we can make them come. Like we can't do it with our bodies, but we're going to like destroy pussy. (laughs) 
Um, did you see the know. series called, like, I think it was called Masters of Sex? Master of Sex? Yes. I think I, was, I watched the first season. Yeah. 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 It was really with Michael. Um, oh, that's right. He dated he Sarah He dated Silver. Sarah Silverman. <laughs> yeah. Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen. Um, right. Yeah. But I think the first, the first, like, I've done a lot of uh, research about the history. Of, I did a lot of research at one point around the history of sex toys. But I think women just started sticking stuff in there when oh, the men were sure. at war, you know, like a, yeah, I mean, yeah, masturbation is always yeah um, existed, right? Yeah, and there was like yeah, some wooden dildos, dildos in Japan, and there's been yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah. Oh, that's like the one thing that I like. I said, like the normal uh, masturbation toys never really appealed to me mm. um, visually, mm. and like the crystal thing, it's just like so beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it's so pretty. Yeah, that it. I mean, you know, everybody's into different things, but I, I just think like rose quartz is just like really pretty to look at. It is, and it does make you feel different to put something on your body or inside your body that you think is just gorgeous. And like uh, mm. a plastic vibrator doesn't give me that sense. Like it's like a visceral sense. It's like this is beautiful. I think the shame of having a rose quartz dildo is that you you can't display it. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can just, I mean, people don't necessarily know what it, what it is. I mean, mine. So when they start touching it, you're like, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Well, you do have to take care of your sex toys. (laughs) Yeah, no, you do have to like, you know, really take care. And like, whenever I carry it to the bathroom to like wash it, I'm like so careful because like, if it falls down, it breaks. It's it's going to break. Yeah. It's really expensive. So like, you really have to fucking. I like the idea of putting something really like fragile, but still very hard and something really beautiful inside yeah. you like that's that's cool like i I think my sex toy is sexy like it's this mm-hmm. you know black silicon thing yeah. like it's that's what i have as well yeah, yeah. and then and, and i've got not, a pink one yeah, as well it's not, not beautiful but it's just beautiful in a different way and i think it's yeah. because it's a natural mm. it's a natural, natural substance substance though. yeah and what's what's really amazing is obviously it's stone right so it's mm. cold yeah and so it needs quite a long time to get to your body temperature mm-hmm. which kind of also means that you can't just like rub one out yeah and so you like i like i just i would just like put it ne- on, like under my legs for a while or mm-hmm. or just like like between my legs and just yeah. like warm it up while i do other stuff sometimes just <laughs> like while i'm still like watching something just to like get it warm get up. it warm so you and then pre med it like yeah so it's like it's like for longer sessions yeah. which is kind of cool i like that you can't like you can't hurry love you know <laughs> <laughs> you can't hurry self-love with the gross cost <laughs> and then the amazing thing is like once it's done that and then once it's like if you use it inside you and you take it out it's like hot because <sighs> the body has heated up so much and that's like that's just like so exciting because you get so much more aware of like all the things that happen in your body. You yeah. Know? That's, I don't know. And yeah, yeah. The substance really fascinates me. I think that's really what, what it, and I, I was just like, and if, if you think like a banana is a really sexy, cool thing, then I mean, put a condom on it maybe, but like, I think you have to find something that kind of turns you on because if your sex mm. side doesn't turn you on, then, then, What's the... You know, you don't want a guy that doesn't turn you on or a girl that doesn't turn you on either. No. So. Um, going back to the men inventing sex toys thing. <laughs> um, I actually spoke to a friend and he um, he had bought the womanizer. And he had it so that when he sleeps with girls... He can be like... He can be like, well, you didn't get there. So how about we... <laughs> And also, men can totally use it on themselves. On themselves, yeah. I watched a video on Reddit that right. showed a man like using the, it on his penis, on his... and it was very fast. And also, like, on the butt, I assume. And on the... Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and a bear's good shivers all the way down to her poop hole. <laughs> that did have a physical effect on <laughs> I didn't think about that, but that would be really intense. Oh my God. It looks like such a, like I haven't actually felt one, but the videos that I've seen using Mm -hmm. that air pulsation, that's intense. Yeah. 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 But I thought it was this, this, this friend of mine who bought it. 
Um, firstly, like your expectations I mean, are so low of like your ability to connect. Okay, but with someone. I don't love the idea when I'm with someone and I have like, and he's like dating around, and I, I don't know, I've been with him like for a couple of nights, and he's like, hey, here's the sexo that I've also put inside vaginas of other women. Well, he said, he, and that's what he said. He's like, but I have to like figure out a story. Like I have to tell her that I bought it for her, like for us every time and okay, i was like that's freaky that's freaky right like that that's I've actually a way... hundred bucks in this in this like what? yeah i this is this is for uh long-term sexual pleasure between yeah. just us you know he was like so you know i'm gonna so the start of the relationship is lying great exactly but it's also like if you said it, you'd bought it just for us then that's creepy but then also it's like dude like uh, you will have, you will be using this with other people, so we're not dumb. Yeah, like especially if you've met on Tinder, it's like I know that I'm not the only contact. Yeah, have. right. Like I really think if you're offering a sex toy, that's really something. Like a sex toy is something that you bring up once you're in a committed thing. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. Unless it's like a, I don't know. Unless it's very clearly like this is just sex. And we're just going to, you know, destroy each other every time we see each other. So it doesn't matter what we yeah. use. Um, but also, I feel like, I mean, that's just like my impression of people that are like really into like kink or open relationships. They're often like way more careful with these things because they have so much more experience and mm-hmm. they don't just like stumble into things. But do you mean know. in terms of they're more, way more careful with? Well, with like communication, I don't know people who are into like kinky stuff, like they normally have more conversations before they enter, mm-hmm. enter into sex because mm-hmm. they just like, they know about like boundaries and stuff. And yeah, that's I true. think they're kind of more aware so- sometimes. I don't, I don't know. When they're ethical, I guess. And yeah. when they're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and experienced, yeah. whereas you're saying like standard straight boy who buys a sex toy for his Tinder dates is probably not going to, take care and how he manages that i don't know it's a weird thing to try and deal with yeah i mean just like when when you just have like random hookups i don't think most people in that culture are like super good at communicating beforehand Mm. like me included because Mm -hmm. i don't know there's still embarrassment around it yeah there is there is still a lot of embarrassment around communicating i mean i have i don't know i have this joke about slow sex and fast sex i don't Mm. know i'm not sure if i heard it um like my ex-boyfriend used to ask me um, if I wanted slow sex or fast sex. Mm-hmm. And I would always say fast sex because I felt like if I say slow, I sound like a loser. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think I saw... Because like fast posted... is like like all the cool stuff, like fast food and fast cars. But like slow cooked food is for people who can't take it. <laughs> and then I'd say, I always, I always ask for a fast sex. I never had an orgasm, but at least I didn't look like a fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it's... And it's a, and it's so true. Like I was too embarrassed to tell him that I maybe because I didn't really know back then what slow sex meant, or I don't know. I was just like, Ugh, I'm insecure. And then I asked girlfriends of mine like how they find it when guys ask them uh-huh. what they want in bed, and they were like, "That's terrifying. I hate those conversations." And obviously, at the same time, you. You want and need those conversations, but yeah. it's like really scary. It's scary. and those were all like super confident feminist women, and they're like, "Oh, I hate it. It's so embarrassing. yeah." And like <laughs> and, and like I'm I yeah I I clench up as well. It's like ah like but it, it come really I feel like it comes from a history of giving feedback and then mm. that looking like it's damaged someone. Like yeah. the number of times I've been like, "No, like this. No, like this. No," like and then it's like then you can see them just getting. Yeah. You know, and it's not like I'm going, no, like this, no, like this, but it's, you know, you're trying to be like, oh, a bit more like this, oh, a bit softer, oh, that, that hurts a bit, or, oh, actually, can we try this? And then, and then there's just like their, their, wo- their, their pr- pride is wounded by it. And then it's like, oh, fuck this, like, yeah. let's just take it slowly and figure it out, and I'll like gently maneuver you into the right position. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man! But uh, there's got to be I mean, a that, way. That, that can that can happen the other way around. I'm sure. That like, um... less teeth. <laughs> <laughs> less teeth. What do you mean? I just want to <laughs> bite it off. Um, but I, I I would love to develop like there's got to be a way to make those conversations fun and not stressful. And it's like how do you how I think I think I would think like now I could have these more more in a more relaxed way just because i've i've matured i know my own body i'm not ashamed like i'm not ashamed of talking about it in front of strangers in 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 a podcast so Mm -hmm. i think not that you have to do that in front of people that you don't know like being a 
an emotional exhibitionist like we are <laughs> doesn't make you, you know, a more mature person, obviously. But yeah. um, no, I, would... I think, yeah. Yeah, I think like, I think I'm, I also agree. I feel also that I am in a different position with that. And also like the kind of interactions I am open to, like the kind of sexual experiences I am now making myself open to a different to in the past. It's not like drunk hookups where it's like, whatever, or um, yeah. And just being able to communicate. But I feel like, yeah, it'd be nice to have like a little strategy of like how to just like drop the power, like drop a smoke bomb of like, this is going to be a fun interaction as opposed to one where I feel yeah. vulnerable, like, like, uh, like I'm going to hurt you and you're going to hurt me and it's going to get uncomfortable and the whole sex vibe is going to die. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that has to do a lot with like neediness. Like if I'm just like super needy and I just need to, and like the thing is my big thing is like intimacy right now that I just, that is like one of my big self, revelations last year that I was like oh I don't actually I'm like really bad at intimacy because all I know is like because I learned having sex basically in the Berlin hookup culture Mm -hmm. it's like oh I I know how to like have sex with someone on the first date but I don't actually know how to get to know somebody slowly Mm -hmm. um and so I think the most vulnerable thing to say to somebody is like hey could you could we just like hold each other like Mm -hmm. like I want to see I'm going to bet money that people would rather have drunken sex with somebody than say that to a human being out loud. (laughs) That's like my theory that it's like so uncomfortable because I felt like, like when I was feeling like really fragile, I was like, I want to, I want to see somebody that I know and just be like, can you hold my hand? And Mm. I almost got sick just thinking of saying that to somebody (laughs) because I was just like, ah, this is horrible. And not, not even because I thought they would, say no, no but it was just like it's just it's just so vulnerable yeah ah uh, vulnerability <laughs> oh, yeah intimacy cuz that's like that's like the vulnerability is the thing that's going to make you have a good conversation before sex but yeah. it's really tough it's yeah. not it's not easy practicing vulnerability is like yeah like so for example with this um going to go back to it with this friend zoning situation when he said it i was like i just went straight into roasting mode oh that's horrible <laughs> <laughs> yeah i went straight he was like oh i guess you're gonna make fun of me on stage now and i was like dude i only write jokes about people that have affected me oh, and i know you're talking about him on the podcast for exactly half an hour. exactly like dude like i'm totally like fucked up about this and i don't um yeah, and like I just went straight into roasting mode, and then when I got home, I was just like sick in my stomach, and then I ended up being vulnerable with him and being like, "Hey, like I was mean, like sorry, <laughs> but like yeah. I was really surprised," and blah 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 blah. And then yeah, being able to open up and be be vulnerable and share that with him, I immediately felt so much better, mm. and then he was able to address it, and that was cool. Um, but yeah, being like yeah, it's the how do you how do you retrain yourself for. <laughs> from yeah protecting yourself and and being romantic that's the other thing that's what i was thinking i'm really bad at being romantic Mm. like i i can have like super friend vibe but then actually like stepping into that uh romantic uh energy i'm not like yeah i don't think i'm good at that either like it takes a long time for me to build that up and with a lot of my exes i've I've always said like i'm not romantic like i'm i'm just not like do you like it when other people are romantic for you or like yeah, yeah. I, I like i really like it um and then are you that too helps like me. ironic are you too like emotionally distant no i think i'm i'm not emotionally distant i'm just not um hmm. or what is that yeah what is that because i feel like i can't say like i love you i'm just gonna make like a weird funny thing about it you know because yeah. i can't just like say it out loud i think <laughs> I'm, i think i'm really honest um, but in terms of creating like a cute, like I have to feel very secure in the dynamic before I'm, I outwardly show affection, for example, mm-hmm. like if it's really just friends, I can be affectionate as a friend or like with children, I can be really yeah. affectionate as like a, you know, caring, um, adult or, but when it's like a romance thing, it's like, I kind of need them to create the dynamic for me Mm -hmm. to feel I can step into it I'm not going to be the one that that takes those steps well that's that's an important thing to know about yourself that Mm. and also to communicate be like you know that's that's a first step isn't it like 
hey, I'm yeah. not super good at like creating spaces that are like, if you need that, then I'm probably not going to be able to do that for you. Yeah. Or like, if you need that, then like, uh, like let me know. And then I can like try and take some steps into it exactly. as well because yeah. I'm not like, I will look like I'm not interested and I'll be just a friend until you, you know, until I feel like that space has been opened up to me. Yeah. No oh, man. <laughs> Fuck. So much stuff. So much uh, stuff. Uh, any other sex stuff? I want to, maybe there are some fun stories. I, you know, I mentioned at the beginning that this guy was in the audience that you knew. Mm-hmm. And I've also had that happen. And I know that maybe more guys, I don't know. They were like, yeah, I, I met this girl online and I invited her to be on the show. I like to, to come, come to a to show, show as mm-hmm. an audience member, which I find a little weird because I don't know. It's not like the way that I want somebody to get to know me necessarily. Hold on. So you meet a guy online and then he comes to your show. I mean, I've heard guys and like comedians say that, that, you know, just because that's where they spend their time. And then I what inviting dates to shows. Yeah. I did that once or twice. I did that a couple of times. And then I was like, no more. Firstly, because the guy gets roasted by all the comedians. It creates a weird dynamic for everybody involved. Yeah. It's your workplace. It's like, what? I'm going to come to your office for, for an yeah. hour and see you work. And then we'll yeah. go out for lunch. Like, that's just weird. Like, and yeah, comedy, like, okay, we're like, I'm not a, you know, comedian that's getting paid for it. Like all the, <laughs> like all, all the time. Um, but I, I made it a very clear no after the first few times. Um, if they're like, oh, can I come to a show? I'll be like, Let's meet somewhere else. Mm -hmm. The power dynamics all off and I'm not interested in that. And the thing is like, I feel like I, like one, one of the guys that I dated for a little bit longer, he saw me first on a show and then we kind of connected after that. And like, after like dating for a couple of weeks, he was like, oh, you're so much more normal than I thought. Because he just saw me on stage and he yeah. thought I was like this crazy sex girl from the Berlin dating scene because totally. I tell stories that are like two years old. And mm-hmm. some t- I mean, I don't tell them all the time, but you know, and so I'm like, oh, honey, that's not me. I'm yeah. sorry. And that's why he thought like, oh, this could be like a fun fling with this woman who is like really just into hooking up and casual sex. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm sorry. That's and... not right. No, <laughs> I, yeah. I made a real rule about nobody, nobody from uh, the audience. Like if you've gotten to know me through my shows that no, like, uh, because I, yeah, there was this one guy and I've mentioned him so many times. I hate how much space he <laughs> takes up. He also was one of the guys that popped up on Bumble. I was just like, no, not him. Um, and, uh, yeah, and he had such a skewed idea of who I was. He just thought I was this crazy, like, slut whore. Like, yeah. like really, like, I think he thought that I would have had an OnlyFans. Like, that I, <laughs> he really thought that I um, was just this massive, yeah, uh, sex bag or I don't know what. And it was really, it was really messed up, all yeah. of his expectations. Yeah. I, like, the funniest story was, like, I used to have this bit about, um, Uh, about vaginas and like how guys don't want to go down on girls sometimes because they said they say it smells like fish and then i make this whole i was like who doesn't like sushi whatever um uh fish casserole (laughs) i know and i did this joke based on a guy that i i think i met him through like tinder or something like a while back and he he really really wanted me to blown but he did not want to go down on me and what? he was yeah and he was basically he was like nah i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it i don't like, like it yeah, it's yeah. just like the taste whatever i can't really remember but it was we like, all taste different yeah and like that too and become like, a connoisseur come on it's a refined taste get into know, it <laughs> get into it like why would you not want to see me come i like I it i, I like it yeah I, I wouldn't go that far <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I'm like i love it <laughs> Um, and then, so basically I wrote this joke about him, never saw him again. And then I was at, um, at Monday night Mike's. He also lived around the corner here. And all of a sudden he appears to the show with another girl. It was like a year or so after, like it was just kind of weird to ever see him ever again anyway. And then he brings a girl to the show and I was like, Ooh, I know what bit I'm going to do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And it was so much fun he sat center right in front of the stage like in the second row and i'm like why you're so dumb and so (laughs) 
I did this, I did this thing about like, you know, how guys who don't want to go down on you and like how fucked up that is. And like, I just basically roasted him and then the girl sits next to him. And then I, I basically had to like go to another show. So I had to like, then leave right after. And like, I didn't even like, Oh, you get to see the the fallout. What a triumph. No, but that was like one of the most fun I've had with an audience member that I knew and I'm like oh I hope it's gonna be such an awkward conversation on your ride home (laughs) she's like hey so do you remember that comedian on stage so there was a talking point that I want to bring up (laughs) or maybe he changed his way oh who knows yeah I mean who knows who Who knows? knows maybe Maybe. Maybe. The, yeah. I've, yeah, I, I like Ian and Bella, who I had the podcast with, um, episode, um, mm-hmm. he, when we stopped seeing each other, he invited me on his, um, he had the uh, 10 PM show. Um, and so it was his whole show and he asked me to be on it and I'm like, you sure? <laughs> and, uh, and I made like this whole bit, which was a quiz show, which basically <laughs> showed him how like, you know, you need to eat pussy. Like, yeah. like, yeah. Showed him for yeah. being someone who doesn't eat pussy, doesn't use his hands, comes and never sees, uh, sees, um, What's about that? how the other yeah. person is feeling. <laughs> oh and I did that bit quite a bit afterwards in front of him. He's such a good sport. Like that's he, hilarious. He wasn't even annoyed that I did that on his show. Like, I, yeah, but I don't understand his emotional setup. Honestly, like, yeah, he's. I, I couldn't really tell you what would offend him. Yeah, he he yeah he really wasn't offended by the fact that I was telling everyone that he was a uh, he needed a lot of work on his lovemaking <laughs> skills. Maybe he's still excited that he gets to have sex in the first place. I think all. I think he might be. I think after <laughs> that really podcast episode scary. though, he was really like, I want to practice everything you just taught me. I really want to. And I was like, okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> Oh gosh, that would be like a great opener to a date. Like, hey, so um, there's a lot of things that I want to practice. So if you're up for that, like, I can't promise it's gonna be fun, but I do want to learn. I do want to learn. So like, can you show me where your clitoris is? <laughs> oh, oh, so cute, so cute. Like, I don't understand because I th- I feel like there are a lot of guys that you know watch educational YouTube videos about how to make a woman come. Like, mm. some guys are really dedicated, and then others are like, I can't believe what all the information that's out there that somebody is like, you know what? I'm going to make a conscious effort not to understand female orgasms. Yeah. Well, is it a conscious? E- I think it's just I mean, like- just like after you broken up, I'm sure you, you told him that you didn't come a lot mm. of times. Yeah. After. And even that wasn't like a wake up call for him to be like, huh, maybe I should like, maybe other guys are better at this or like there's things to learn. That's just yeah. astounding. Well, I didn't, when, when I, when I, when I ended things with Ian, I didn't say this is why I like, you and know. I mean, that's totally fine to acknowledge and move on, you know, you know, but I didn't, yeah, he didn't get that feedback as any cause for why we weren't having sex anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah so maybe it wasn't so motivating for him. He was yeah. just like, oh, okay. you know, I don't think he even saw it as if we were seeing each other that intensively, even though we were seeing each other like three times a week. I don't think he even like <laughs> really thought there was anything particularly serious, not serious, but like yeah. as if it was developing into anything. I don't yeah. think he thought that. Oh my God. I, I went into quarantine with a guy that I met on Bumble back then. Yeah. Like in February. And we, for a month I was traveling. We talked every day. We sent each other a voice message every day. We had hour long conversations and I was traveling and then his dad was in the hospital. It was like kind of dramatic. And mm-hmm. we like really shared a lot of like very personal information. And then I got back to Berlin just before the lockdown. We went on a walk um, and we'd only seen each other like 10 minutes before I went on all these travels. Uh-huh. And literally hours of conversation contact every every day and then i was like yeah so like because it was lockdown and at the beginning you know nobody was seeing anybody because everyone was so scared and so i kind of wanted to know if we would see each other and all and he was like oh no i've not thought about that at all and i'm like motherfucker not thought about what about about that we are in a sort of a dating scenario we would met on bumble what the fuck and i was like are you kidding like I've invested so much time. Like yes, okay, we're becoming friends, but like the dynamic. I mean, you can tell if you can tell if. And then he was like, mm. "Oh no, I like share information with people like all the time. Like it's nothing special for me." I'm like, I "Share information with people." I mean, all that's the not time. how we said it, but he was like, "You know, th- this is not special that we've talked so much." I'm like, 
And that made me really mad because I felt like he was just not being honest. And I totally. think he felt like put on the spot and like, then say that. Yeah. And, and be like, hey, I don't know. Like, this is something, but I don't know what it is. But I'm like, don't. Don't. That's, that's misleading. Like, that's, that's 100% misleading. misleading. And then I hate it when people are on a dating platform and they're like, oh, no. Just like, one in front. I've, I've never actually had the, the that in particular, but. Because like women are like easy. People are always like, oh, women are so complicated. Women are so easy. It's just like, it's just like continuous attention, compliments. Yeah. Like that's the key. Like I'm like not in like a creepy way, but if you are really into a girl, I, th- I feel like if a guy is like really attentive and sweet and considerate and understanding and pays her compliments, any guy can get, can get a date at yeah, least with, yeah. with a girl. If they're not, if it's not like on the creepy side, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But that's but exactly like, it. Like regular contact compliments listening like empathetic how are you feeling today yeah or, or it's yeah so fucking easy like yeah. women are yeah. not complicated yeah. in that way yeah. what would you like to happen in the relationship department in 2021 ah <sighs> good question i you know it's what i've wanted um oh okay so before the last lockdown or didn't the start of the very first lockdown that we had uh, there wasn't a lot on my scene at all. Like I really like, there was nothing happening, but there was a friend of my housemate, um, who I'd met a couple of times and he intrigued me and there was a chemistry there. And I eventually got the balls up to ask her, Hey, I really like this guy. Do you reckon you could put me in contact with him? Cause we've met a few times. And she said to me, Ooh, well, if you get in contact with him, like you need to be interested in something serious. Like can't just mm. you know you know he's like you need to it I'm would sure need to be never so- heard this in Merlin before. Need, yeah well <laughs> you need you need you need to you know your intentions would need to be serious mm-hmm. and i was like yeah 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 and then i went away and i was like fuck you bitch like i've been looking for love for like like that's all like you know i got yeah. married in the hope of love all my relationships are me trying yeah. i'm not trying to mess with anyone i'm not trying to oh just... you think she had a different a, yeah. a wrong impression of you yeah that she like this ha- my, my my very good friend she knows me better now after that lockdown but it was like i just felt like i've been painted in this picture of like i like to mess with people and not be mm. honest and i'm just interested in these short flings and not being responsible with people's emotions so mm. You Maybe know. he just knows him and like he's been hurt a lot or something. But so have I, Maybe. man. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like, so down. did you get his number? No. Really? Well, I was like, dude, he sounds weak. So <laughs> <laughs> get out of here! I hate you. <laughs> what a nice man. Oh, he's now with someone that's got kids and he's super in love and it's oh, fine. Okay. Like it's perfect. Um, I was a bit worried as well because he was still smoking a lot of weed and um, and oh, I just okay. like stopped everything. So I was like, maybe this is not the right the right match um, to pursue to pursue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like in terms of this this feeling of like when people when I feel like my mom's like, so you want to be alone? <laughs> you know, like it's like of course I, like I would really like to be able to um, like slowly develop a trusting, loving relationship with someone yeah. with lots of air. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot of time. So like if I if you I really could, don't have a lot of time. I really don't. Like I work full time and then I do comedy every night and then I have the other projects that I'm doing. You know, I've got maybe two nights a week. Yeah, like sixty minutes a week. <laughs> <laughs> Get that womanizer out. We've got sixty <laughs> seconds. Um no. But uh yeah, so I would you know, that I would like that. Like a, a loving dynamic with trust and understanding that like, hey, super busy, they're super busy. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, that's what I would like. What about you? Yeah. I'm really intrigued about the, uh, being really good friends with someone before something happens because like I, like I said, because I, I kind of, uh, sexually grew up in the hookup culture here. Mm -hmm. Um, that has never happened to me because I feel like I'm always like, if I'm attracted to somebody, I'm attracted immediately. And I know that. And then something happens or it doesn't, but I don't think I've ever really been attracted to somebody that I've known for a long time. But I, but I think that it's like such a cool thing because then like the first time you have a conversation about sex, it's like different because you're already like, Ooh, we know each other. You already know it. Yeah. And that's the thing with that first boyfriend that I had in Berlin, um, with the stopping and starting and yeah, it was quite a damaging first year, but we actually got to know each other and we were friends by the time 
I ended up in hospital and then going, hey, I'd really like yeah. a monogamous relationship with you. I'd known him for a year and a half and really gotten to know him. And I knew I knew what he was about. You know, yeah. I could trust who he was and 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 I knew exactly how much we connected on things and values and um, the important stuff, you know, like how much he wanted to suck dick and... <laughs> Yeah, I mean that can that can be worked into a relationship if that's really important to him. <laughs> exactly. I don't. Yeah, you can suck a dick. Know. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I think starting a relationship on a basis of friendship is cool. But um, you know, I, I'm just like intrigued. I I would love to see what that's like. Yeah. Yeah, and that's yeah. I've had a few of those in my life, and they're the ones. But then that I look really on work. my friends list. And I'm like, mm, don't know if anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to have like, you know, like a, a really good friend that you've lost contact with for 10 years and then they slip back into your oh, life and you're yeah. like, oh my God, this is so Oh my easy. God, let me slip into your open relationship. <laughs> yeah. No, like that's one thing. I just, I have so many trust issues. I cannot do I have, open relationships. I have massive trust issues, but like I've done a lot of work on them and I think with good communication, you can get through them. But like really, you know, from all my time in Berlin, I'm really like, hey, I think default is monogamy. You know, I think that's or like just... serial, you know, it's not like, I don't think I necessarily believe in like, oh, like forever, especially cause I no. am not going to have kids. And so that I just realized the other day, it's like, oh my God, it means that you can always leave someone without creating a yeah. big mess. That's amazing. That's yeah. freedom. <laughs> that is freedom. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a view even with children. It's like, if I, if I ever parent a child with someone, they need to be someone that we can break up and they're still going to be cool as yeah. a friend like that's you know i don't believe any relationship is forever i'd love that to be the case i look at my mom and my stepdad and like they are doing a great job mm-hmm. um with not so many compromises and not so much like like ooh, that's unhealthy like they're not looking at that i can see why um you know i think it's possible but i am very realistic like i just yeah you know, exactly yeah yeah so yeah i think i need to at least try long healthy stable monogamy for once <laughs> Yeah, I feel like the last two years has been me um, creating friendships with people that I was attracted to, and then just like oh my god, just lying having... to yourself. Like, well, no, yeah, I'm or very just like, or just like becoming friends to the point where it's like, yeah, like not like I really reconcile it, and it's like, yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, no. but it's like that you've gotten to know somebody so well that the attraction goes out of them. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Or just like, yeah, just yeah, it, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that. Um, but look, really, for 2021, I'm just so focused on projects. It would be really cool to have that. But I have no, like, I, I there's a part of me that goes, hmm, maybe I will have no relationship until I leave Berlin. Wow. When is that? I would like to try, I don't know in what form, but I would like to try to do a couple of years in New York. Mm. Um, I have no idea how I would get a visa or how I'd do that. With my new job, they've got offices in the states if there could be some kind of work transfer at some point cool. maybe um but uh even if it's not living there uh i think i i don't know how i could do it but i need to, i need to send, spend some time in new york sounds great yeah so yeah but i don't think i'm gonna you know find i just there's a part of me that's really um skeptical on like i don't know I, like everyone says berlin is just this hard place to you know there's so much transient uh, so many trans like people are yeah. leaving and um, people come here and they're broken and they're just trying to numb themselves and broke and, and like broke. It's, yeah I mean I, I'm sure it's changing with like the startup industry and mm-hmm. stuff but I feel like it still has that vibe that yeah people don't come here when they're in a stable place in their lives a lot of times at all it's and I think it's I think this city has got like there's a history that shows oh, yeah. that there's something very broken here and something you know there's like, this crazy creative energy but I don't know if this is a place where <laughs> love is um yeah well I think everyone says that love is not easy to find in Berlin mm. but I don't know if there's any credence in that but most of my relationships have been um problematic at yeah. best so I don't know Do you know people that have like I mean, I know like Germans who have found mm. Germans, mm. um, kind of, but in the, in expat sort of the scene. expat scene who have found each other where you think it's like really stable. Yeah. I know a couple, I know a couple, um, one just got married. Um, they're like Brazilian and British and, oh, cool. um, and they're really great. He's a visual artist and she 
does some blogging stuff and works just for stable job kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they're one. They're one. They're the only one that comes to mind. Yeah. My, my, yeah, no, Germans don't really say not Germans. Yeah. Like the expat community. I would yeah. say Paul and Phyllis, but it's only yeah. one expat. Yeah. They yeah, true. Pretty stable. But it's, yeah. I don't know. I'd like to... I'd like to not just fall into that. Oh yeah, it's Berlin's fault. Exactly. I don't. I don't, I don't subscribe like that. to that anymore. I'm all no. about like I want to, you know, take more responsibility mm. for my life, and that's why I think I was always like very frustrated and this year. I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to work on myself as much mm. as I possibly can, and yeah. just started going back to therapy and everything. And so I don't know. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's like the like I took charge last year by removing toxins, you know, and uh, and really getting yeah. clarity and starting really healthy practices and it was like okay it's not Berlin's fault it's I need to get healthy within myself and know exactly what I want to do and be pushing forward in everywhere like in every direction I want to be going and yeah it's got nothing to do with Berlin my my unhealthy love relationship past and it's also like why are we in Berlin like we're part of the problem because we came here as sort of unstable people maybe totally and yeah and the, the, this lockdown made me go why am i why am i here and it's like mm. i'm here because this is the place where i can get better at comedy i can do shows every night and whilst i'm still in my first five years of doing comedy this is the place for me to get the most practice mm-hmm. and then i want to go where there are like the the heavy hitters the world yeah. experts of comedy and give myself some time there and then who knows yeah but I might, I might only be able to do that by like jumping across there for a month and then coming, you know, it might just be that kind of dynamic. Yeah. So I don't know if Berlin continues to be my home. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do you want to plug anything? Yes. Yeah. I want to plug uh, something that I spent um, the couple of days working on intensely. I also have a podcast. It's called FAQ Masculine. It's in German, unfortunately, where I interview men about masculinity, and I'm really excited about it, and you can find it everywhere, um, and especially on Instagram and all the platforms. Yeah, masculinity is a great topic. I, um, Yeah, actually, my healthiest relationship ever was with a man who um, was doing, uh, he majored in gender studies, and he was looking into yeah, a lot of mm. stuff about masculinity as well, and um, yeah, really interesting topic. Yeah, it really is. Not given enough uh, No, it time. isn't. And yeah. it's really nice because I get, I just, you know, I get a lot of good feedback from men and it's like men offering to be on my podcast, which is really what? sweet. Because, <laughs> nice. I mean, I've already kind of booked everyone for the first season, but it's just like, they're like, hey, if you need to talk to someone, I'm like, maybe you should just talk with your friends about masculinity. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my podcast. But, I mean, that's what I want. Just like to encourage people to ask like new questions maybe yeah. or just to like expand their idea of like the different men that are out there and how they think about it. I don't know. I really, really enjoy it, even though it's a lot of work. It's great. It, I just, just hearing it now come out of your mouth for the first time, it really sounds like a great ploy to get dick. Um, well, <laughs> I think I have to like be sourcing it differently. It's a lot of married guys also. And at, gay the guys. Moment, <laughs> at the moment, at the moment, I'm sure you could get some. I think that would kind of fuck with the dynamic. I, I have a very... Afterwards. I mean, I'm like... I, I think I'm like flirty, but in an asexual way, in a, in a weird... I don't know. Interesting. So like there's like a... like a, It's like playful, mm-hmm. but it's not... Um, it's not... I don't think it's like I'm sexual gonna or romantic. I'm going to eat you later. Yeah. No. no. Cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, um, you can find me on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, AF Barros and TikTok. I've now got almost oh 400 God. followers. Whoa. One of my videos got 61,000 views. Wow. Which is crazy. Um, yeah. So uh, that's been Adults Only Comedy Berlin. Uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye.